Hello and welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. I am Wasbir Hussain. The demand for separate states heats up the socio-political firmament in the Northeast from time to time. When the Bodo Accord was signed in 2003, leading to the creation of the Bodoland Territorial Council or BTC, many thought the curtains may have come down at last on the Bodoland statehood demand. That was not to be because the All Bodo Students Union continued with their demand for a separate state and had actually intensified its agitation. In fact, APSU members were on the streets in New Delhi last fortnight, joining few other groups to press its demand. Northeast is the only region in the country where the government has signed peace agreements with agitating groups, leading to the granting of maximum autonomy in the political administrative sphere. Starting with the Assam Accord in 1985 that brought quite a few economic incentives to the state, the region saw the Mizo Accord in 1986, followed by the Accord with the Tribal National Volunteer Rebel Group in Tripura and the Bodo Liberation Tigers in Assam's Bodo Heartland. Yet, the agitation for autonomy, statehood, or what is vaguely called the right to self-determination goes on in the region. <clears throat> Before we begin the discussion, let us take a look at this special report. Movement for separate states and autonomy never seemed to end in the Northeast. No new state has been created since the early 70s. But there have been movements galore for creation of new states. Last fortnight, several organizations, including the All Bodo Students Union, the Indigenous Peoples Front of Tripura, and others, staged a dharna in New Delhi to press for the creation of new states in the country. These groups have formed an organization called the National Federation of New States and threatened to form a political front ahead of the 2019 Lok Sabha elections in case the center fails to concede the demands of groups like the APSU for separate states. Significantly, the IPFT, which is an ally of the BJP in Tripura, had also raised the demand for a separate Tripura land during the rally in Delhi, although the tribal-based party had indicated after the tie-up that it would not press the separate state demand again. Now, what is sustaining these separate state agitations? Is it the quest for political power by some mass-based local organizations or are there other reasons behind such movements? Do such demands reflect lack of equitable justice, forcing major communities in an existing state to dream of living separately? Does it raise the question of poor governance by the successive state governments? We shall try and seek answers. Okay, even today, there was a rally in Assam's Karbianglong district to press for an autonomous state. Right, to, to discuss this issue, I am joined from Kohima by Mr. David Sangtam, the General Secretary of the Eastern Nagaland People's Organization or ENPO that is seeking a separate state to be carved out of Nagaland. In Agatella, I have Shekhar Datta, well-known political analyst. Professor Bimola Koizam of the Jawaharlal Nehru University <coughs> is supposed to join me from New Delhi. 
in Imphal. I am joined by Mr. Rupa Chandra, Editor-in-Chief of Impact TV. And of course, at our studios in Guwahati, I have Mr. Biswajit Daimari, yes. Member of Parliament of the Borderland People's Front. Dr. Nani Gupal Mohanta, Head of the Department of Political Science at Guwahati University and a well-known political commentator and senior journalist, Susanto Talukdar. Okay, I'd like to go straight to Kohima uh, to Mr. David Sangtam, the General Secretary of the ENPO. Uh, welcome, Mr. David Sangtam. Welcome to Northeast Live. Your organization, the ENPO, is agitating or demanding a separate state to be carved out of Nagaland, Eastern Nagaland. Uh, you have 20 MLAs from that area from where you are demanding a separate state to be carved out of Nagaland. What is the problem? Why are you demanding a separate state? At the outset, I would like to thank the notice to the ENPO. And then I'm privileged to be here on behalf of my people here in Kohima. Actually, I'm the president of the Eastern Nagaland <coughs> People's Union, Kohima. Kohima unit based president. I request that my designation may kindly be rectified. Now, historically, when we look into past histories of the Nagaland state, it is uh, known to many of the senior Naga leaders, even the national leaders also, that our ENP area, till 1948, prior to that too, we were under unadministered area. So in due course of time, our jurisdictions were called as a Northeast Frontier Agency. Right. So in fact, it was only in the year 1948, 1948, the first Indian national flag was hosted at Dungsang. Actually, at that point of time, there was no administration as such. In fact, it was only the presence of few of the government of India representatives who have come and hosted the flag in Dungsang. Yes. But then there was no officers or no officials, or I mean, there was no office as such. But it was only in the year 1951 the government of India created Dungsan Frontier Division that is headed by assistant political officer. So in fact, the administration of our government of India came to our Eastern Nagaland in reality only in 1951. Okay, in so fact, you are, Mr. Sangtam. I have also discussed. Mr. Sangtam, you are talking about history. Hello? You are talking about the special yes. status of the Tiwensang area. You are talking about the special status of the Tiwensang area. Uh, very briefly, your opening remarks, why do you want a separate state? What is the problem you are facing with Nagaland? Very briefly, I will come back to you again. Thank you, thank you. Okay. I will try to be brief. But uh, when the state, Nagaland state was created in 1963, yeah. our people were having less qualified people, no education, no schools, no facilities. So from the day one of the inception of the statehood, we lack development, education, either economically also we were very backward. Then even after the inception of the statehood, more than 50 years now, the status, economic status, educational status, developmental status of our people is very far behind with the rest of so, our Naga so, so brothers I'll come and back sisters. to you. I'll so come back to you, Mr. David Sangtam. <laughs> Mr. David Sangtam, I'll come back to you. The basically the point you are making is that your region is comparatively, uh, uh, if I may use the word, less developed in the sectors like education and others. So that is one of the reasons why you want a separate state so that you can concentrate full-fledged manner to, for the development of your people and your area. That is what I have understood. I'll come back to you, David Sangtam. Uh, Shekhar Datta, uh, you know, the IPFT uh, is an ally of the BJP. Uh, we were made to understand that IPFT has given up their demand for a separate Tripura land. But again, last week, 
In New Delhi, the IPFT agitators were taken to the streets. They had taken to the streets in New Delhi and had openly demanded a separate Tripura land. So can you explain what is going on? Is there differences within the IPFT? Uh, Shekhar Dutta, if you can hear me, uh, IPFT, we understand, had given up their demand for a separate Tripura land. But last week at a dharna in New Delhi, they have once again reiterated their demand for a separate Tripura state. So what is going on? Okay, I think, I think there is an audio issue. We'll try to fix, uh, fix that demand. Uh, I, I will I will I will come to my panelist in the studio, but before that, Bimal Akoizam, uh, uh, professor at JNU, welcome once again, Bimal. Uh, how are you looking at it from a distance? Uh, you know, <coughs> Bimal, what do you think are the factors that is sustaining the statehood movements in the northeastern region? You have just heard the ENPO leader David Sangtam saying that okay, their region was less developed. And therefore, they want a separate state to be carved out of Nagaland. How how are you looking at it? What is your take? See, uh, the first of all, you know, there is a historical reason uh, that we need to understand. the The modern state formation is comparatively, uh, you know, new uh, in in this part of the world, and a traditional state. Uh, which were there, which would have evolved into a sense of a political economy, a sense of peopleness. Uh, that kind of a state uh, was also subverted by this post-colonial Indian state when it came into being. For example, right. Manipur and Assam and so and so forth. A traditional state formation were also subverted, uh, and therefore, uh, you know, the capacity for building up a political community is relatively historically very weak. Uh, and when, therefore, what happened is that every form of grievances, people think that it will be solved by having a state of their own. Now, you must remember that, you know, this, uh, this state formation is demanded. The word is demanded, if you remember. You should remember that. So it is that they think that the Delhi can be the source of their development, for their destiny, whatever is to be done, you know, it is to be in Delhi. If there is a kind of an interdependence among the people in that part of the world themselves, then you know this demand would not be in the same form. Since the entire livelihood is vis-a-vis -vis with Delhi, the money is coming from there, the political legitimacy is coming from there. So instead of negotiating for their issues of development, issues of uh, identity question, what in, in social science they call it politics of recognition and politics of redistribution, that could have been resolved within the political community in the northeast, but it's not done because you have uh, my bav structures, which is the source of your political legitimacy. Right. That's the source of your economy in Delhi. That's why everybody is going there to demand for it. So there's a political elite who is also getting into that kind of a motor politics. So political elite and getting into that kind of a And that is one part of the story. The politics. other part of the story is, you know, within these newly created states like Nagaland and... Uh, you know, you have certain segment of the society, they get terribly marginalized in yeah. terms of their entitlement. For example, this frontier Nagaland issue in, you know, if you see their uh, ICDI major or their, you know, location in the political structure of Nagaland in bureaucracy and others, they think that they are marginalized. So that's one of the issues. That's the second but set of issues. I will, in Manipur, I will, I will you have this point. tribal community who feel that they are marginalized in developmental very, terms and so and so forth. Very important points. So there, in Dimala, Assam, the similar Hold kind on. of things. In Tripura, there are communities who feel mar marginalized. Yeah. So uh, these communities are the who feel marginalized. That is the region. Uh, that is the that is the region. Uh, Bimal Akhoizam, just hold your thoughts, please. Uh, that is, uh, yes, you very rightly said marginalization because that is what the ENPO leader had also said. Uh, 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 Shekhar Dutta, if you can hear. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, Bishwajit Doimari, you know, uh, yes. we, we, 2003, when your uh, leaders signed the Bodo Accord, uh, that time it was the leaders of the Bodoland Liberation Tigers and the government, when they signed the Bodo, Bodo Accord leading to the creation of the BTC, 
there was this feeling that you know okay fine uh, you know at least one agitation yes, for mm. a separate state is ended but that did not last for long very soon organizations like the absu once again emerged on the scene and actually intensified their agitation so why do you think uh, these agitations are once again emerging and uh, let us take your case that is the uh, bodo statehood case now you see actually it is uh, the wrong policy of indian government because when 2003 a court was done there at that time they said that there will be no any further division of any state so uh, government of india closed the uh, new creation of a uh, new separate that, state yeah. so that's why they convinced that we'll uh, create one autonomous council under the six schedule of indian constitution and which uh, can be more money which can be give a more protection to tribal people of uh, assam so that's why uh, uh, that time our leaders also agreed and uh, uh, talked with the government then agreement was signed and our chapter was closed but uh last 2014 uh yeah. last 2000 2014 uh, 14 uh, telangana was like created telangana was uh, created okay. then the automatically they again opened the uh, creation of separate state issue then our apsu and other old bodo organization that time raising again then government of india policy now sensed and they are now starting to create the separate state then agree bodo language separate state also should be created, created. now now you, you at one stage yes. although the bodoland people's front uh, ha, was a signatory i mean there was yes. a creation later mm. uh, you know although the bodoland people's front had given up their demand you are saying that the telangana movement yes. has once again restarted or reignited the statehood movement and at one stage your party had also had to support the creation of a borderland state. No, but you, you see, we want the solution of this issue because that time, the time was very bad. That time, I uh, personally uh, talked with our then, uh, then Prime Minister, Manmohan Singh Ji, yeah. he was from Assam. Then I talked with him, that you have to say something on the uh, separate state issue of our I mean, Assam. Otherwise, Caribbean situation was very bad. And then the uh, borderland uh, area uh, situation was also very at that time. True. I request um, Manmohan Singh Ji, to do something at least let us uh, uh, see and let us discuss about the issue whether separate state is uh, needed again or the existing councils are the uh, sufficient so, and that time honorable prime minister was agreed and that time uh, one uh, expert committee also was formed yes uh, headed by the zk pillai but i don't understand why zk pillai committee is still not allowed to oh, money work for the uh, examining so, of this so, issue. So, so Bishwajit Dramari, you are basically saying this is the wrong policy of the government of India. No, no. Had they not created Telangana, perhaps yes, the statehood yes, agitation no would not movement, have, there, there, was no there was no movement. movement. So Nonikupal Mohanta, do you agree to this view that government <laughs> actually uh, once again opened the Pandora's box in 2014 when there was always all the agitating organizations that suddenly fell silent. At that time, they created Telangana and once again revived this movement. Well, you see, uh, was be there is always a political reason behind for the formation of new states actually uh, whether we like it or dislike it the fact is that uh, westphalian state is the reality so keeping that framework in mind if you look at for example in assam there are essentially three factors for the formation of states one is which is cited as the assam is hegemony you know at that point yeah. of time no other states uh, in india has been uh, divided so much as that has been done. That was the in, trigger for the all party hill leaders conference yeah, movement. That began. So the one is the Assamese hegemony, whether we agree or disagree, that's a point for debate. The second point is what, you know, aspiration of the sub-national groups, which began in with the Gupinath Bardali committee, which was in fact highly debated in the constituent assembly regarding whether it was a legacy of the coup plan plan. I do not want to go into the details yeah. because of the kind of isolation that many colonial masters wanted to keep them. So the aspiration of the sub-national groups and the elite formation is equally responsible, which legitimately they claim that they have represented the wishes of the people. So the sub-national demand is the second. And the third factor was B, we must not lose sight of is the fact of the security concerns of the Indian state. If you look at this stage have been bifurcated or created not because there is a genuine demand. Look at the formation of Nefar to the Orunasal Pradesh. That is the Chinese factor is there. Even the Lusai Hills to Mizoram Hills, there is a strong sovereignty factor that was, you know, the state formation went on. Again, look at the formation of Nagaland. The demand was for a sovereign state. So, therefore, it is not necessarily that only because to of the... To assuage the feelings, yeah, to put, uh, to postpone uh, 
uh, yeah, some movement from so taking Indian place. state, Indian state takes up this creation of states as a model for conflict resolution. That is number one. Initially, okay. if you look at I'll in 1955, it was essentially linguistic, essentially. Then later on, in 2000, BJP in, in order fact, to In fact, B.R. Ambedkar suggested that it should be on the basis of language. Yeah, definitely. Now, even that, you know, that's debatable, whether, it, uh, whether you agree to have linguistic states. But later on, in case of Northeast India, it is the ethnicity. It is the identity right. issues we are very will, important. We'll but back, in uh, 2000, I just want to last finish by saying one thing. Yeah. But BJP, in order to come out of their, you know, Hindutva agenda, they in 2000, 2000 have created three states, Jharkhand, Uttarakhand and Chattisgarh. Chattisgarh. Mm -hmm. So basically to give representation, what Bimal talks about the politics of recognition, particularly of the tribal people and citing the question of Correct. counter development. So I there are a lot of factors lot of fa We'll to, come back, we'll so analyze these factors in detail. Let me quickly try to understand from Shekhar Dutta in Agartala, uh, Shekhar Dutta, you know, uh, the I, we all know that the IPFT, Indigenous People's Front of Tripura, was demanding a separate Tripura land. That is one of the main plank. When they entered into an alliance with the BJP, the, we were told that they have given up their demand. Within one week of the government being formed in Agatala, IPFT volunteers and members were on the streets in Delhi and they reiterated their demand for a separate Tripura land state. So what is going on? I mean, is there conflict within the IPFT or it is something which they cannot just give up. What do you think, Shekhar? Uh, IPFT, IPFT has to play, uh, pay lip service to the demand for Twitter land. Otherwise, they cannot keep their followers together. And uh, that is why their followers and cadres uh, reached Delhi and organized uh, processions and rallies. But here they have fallen silent because long before the assembly election, BJP both at state and central level made it very clear that they would never accept the demand for division of Tripura and the creation of a separate state called uh, Tripura land. Uh, and right. uh, till now, the government uh, was sworn in on uh, 9th March and till now, till now IPFT has done nothing, nothing uh, within the state to disturb the apple cart. But at the same time, they also need to keep their flocks together. That is why uh, so, hundreds of them reached so Delhi and took out a procession. <laughs> you are you are absolutely uh, cynical, but, uh, and you you don't take that uh, take that uh, dharna in New Delhi and reiteration of demand seriously, Shekhar Dutta. You 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 don't take it seriously, the Delhi demand. No no. No, no, I don't take it seriously. IPFT will be again serious about the demand only when they feel politically challenged by rivals. Absolutely. Now, now let me quickly uh, take a... They will uh, uh, for the time being, within the, time being within the state. Yeah. Uh, Shekhar, hold on. Let me quickly take a completely different view. Uh, let me go to Rupa Chandra in Imphal. Rupa Chandra, your Manipur is a completely different case. Uh, Manipur, it was a princely state. It merged with India. In fact, two years after India's independence, that was in 1949. Uh, so yet today, uh, there is no demand for a separate state or autonomy in the Imphal Valley among the majority Metis. But that is not the case in Manipur's hill districts because given a chance, they would either like to come up with a separate state or at least merge with Nagaland. Uh, so it is also a part of that whole statehood movement, Manipur. On one side, the Metis who are comfortable, they have no problem after the merger in 1949, it's debatable. That's a different thing. We are not going into that, but there is absolutely no problem. But you have parts of the state that hill areas where the Nagas given a chance would either have a separate state or join with Nagaland. Rupa. Wasbir, uh, you and I know it's an issue of actually uh, governance, uh, lack of governance and also politics. There's a lot of politics going on, on with this statehood. Agreed, uh, we have about 1.3 billion uh, strong population, whole of the India, and we need more states. There are a whole lot of states which need to be bifurcated for better governance. But what you see here is that uh, the, the, the whole issue of state making has been politicized. Now, uh, when, when there's a demand for a statehood, the center has to go into the objectives of it. Center has to go into and find out uh, whether it's worth giving a state whether it's feasible. So the whole thing has to be looked from the governance point of view. So all this demand for uh, this thing statehoods are indicators of a, of, of a failing governance 
and also a, a, a great failure in nation building process which the government uh, which the india has been taking up for last uh, you know six seven decades so uh, what happens in manipur is while the maite is in the uh, uh, in the valley area, you know, are comfortable with the fact that the entire Manipur uh, belongs to Manipuris. And when they say Manipuris, we tend to define uh, all three major ethnic communities that are living in Manipur. Right. For example, the Kukis and the Nagas we take together. Uh, that's a, that's but, a but very that's interesting the issue construct. With the, this, uh, the tribal groups in. Yeah. Carry on, carry so, on, Rupa. So what you see is, uh, as I said, it's a failure of our politicians as well. Uh, whenever they fail to provide answers to their uh, to their uh, the voters, they always fall back on this you know this uh, statehood and all this uh, grouping you know systems uh, you know trying to get uh, this thing you know blame the majority uh, uh, for whatever uh, we uh, yes sir, in hold your areas. thoughts uh, Rupa so, Chandra I'll come back to you. I'll come back to, we have only one politician, Visajit Doimari. <laughs> I'll have to take his views. But before, uh, I have to go for it, but before that, quickly, Bimal Akoizam. Uh, Bimal, uh, how much do you think these are governance issue, lack of equitable justice, lack of distributive justice, uh, uh, the sense of alienation, uh, or do you think it is just political aspirations of a select group of elite mass-based leaders? See, uh, that's what I said. I have started off by saying there are two sets of issues that you have to understand. One is that historically the very nature of political community in the North is, is relatively weak because the, there are very few states. Manipur was one, Tripura was one, Assam was one, and there are some Kasi states. Okay, the Kasi state was much more at a smaller level, but in a very organized modern state structure you find in Manipur, for instance. So the kind of political community that you can create to that state is relatively confined to very few states like yes. Brahmaputra-based state or the uh, Valley-based state or the Manipur Valley-based state. So that's a historical background. Correct. Second is, as one of your panelists have rightly suggested, there is the, the state formation has been a major of conflict resolution. Okay, so and conflict is based Monica on Bahamonto an identity politics. Yeah. So that kind of an ethnicization has been part of that state formation in the northeast. Right. These are the historical background. This right. is one set of issue that we should keep in mind. Absolutely. And the immediate one is what I am saying is that within the modern state, because of the first set of issue, first set of uh, issue, we cannot resolve our own problem within, including the distributive uh, issues issue of re redistribution of wealth we'll within back. the state on that, or on the that identity point. or justice. We can't right. do it ourselves because there is a... Uh, just, just hold on, just hold on. There is this New Delhi which is the supplier of your political legitimacy and finance. Yeah. So the elite also exploit the situation. You think that if the Ahomia is the one who is getting the entire fund, if we get a different political structure, our elite will also get a fund from Delhi. That's how so people start demanding. There that is an elite, elite new interest state. in it. Absolutely. You Bimal, should not forget Bimal, just that hold one. On. Bimal, just hold on. Uh, we, I'll go for a break. Susanta Talukdar, very quickly, your opening remarks. Uh, <coughs> very quickly. I believe the entire complexity has arisen because of the inconsistency in the policies of the central government. And uh, I, I agree with Mr. Jit Doimari. He said that. But it is not in just case of uh, the Congre uh, Congress government only. See, it is also the BJP. It, BJP in its election manifesto yes. in 2014. It promised and it said that regional aspirations BJP has always stood for greater decentralization through smaller states. And uh, it also added uh, a new chapter in its manifesto relating to the issues, aspirations of the Gorkhas, Boros, and all other areas who have. So we'll have to, so we'll have to wait and I'll come back to you, Susanta yeah, Talukdar. Sure. But very quickly, you have made a very important point that uh, the party in power at this point in time had also promised decentralization and uh, the aspirations of the smaller groups like the Gurkhas and others. We shall go for a short break. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, Biswajit Doimari, you see, this is a letter. This is the Ministry of Home Affairs has constituted this committee to go into the demand for a separate 
uh, Bodoland State. Uh, this was on 26th of February 2014. They have set up this committee headed by the former Union Home Secretary G.K. Pillai. The time given on this committee was that within nine months, they were supposed to come up with this report on the feasibility. Now, till today, Bishwajit Doimari, uh, there is no news of what is the result of this committee, whether they have submitted this report. Now, my question to you is that, Bishwajit Doimari, you belong to the BPF, which is an ally of the BJP. So you have all access to the go government and the government machinery. Yes. So what are you doing? Have you raised this issue in parliament? Have you raised this issue with the MHA? What are you doing? And what is the status basically? That is what I want to know. So say we want solution. And uh, that's why we ask the uh, government that you examine the issue and uh, let them uh, give some suggestion, this committee. And through this uh, report, uh, the government should uh, try to solve the border problem. So uh, that's why this committee should be allowed to work. Otherwise, only the separate step movement will be uh, launch continue the uh, APSU or other organization. So that will be only uh, create the law and order situation. That's why now this issue should be uh, solved. Whether uh, uh, what maybe this but government should uh, response they are this committee. So you want that. So what Susanto Talabra yeah. has made a very important point, Bishwajit Doimari. He is saying that. Uh, BJP's election manifesto also they talked about decentralization of powers through, so, smaller, uh, through, smaller, states. through smaller states. So are you going to raise this matter with your alliance partner? Me? Yeah. No, no what, what I am saying, this issue should be uh, solved and uh, uh, government should pay attention. Government should man, hurt their money problem. Not allow the situation to drift. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, 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 yes. Say in Tripura election also, although BJP clarified that we are for a united Tripura, and IPFT may be demanding for a separate Tripura land, separate state of Tripura land. At that point of time, also BJP didn't clarify that we promised uh, this issue in the 2014 Lok Sabha. So there is a bit of there is a bit of ambiguity. There is a bit of ambiguity there. Uh, ambiguity there. Ambiguity there. Uh, David Sangtam, David Sangtam, uh, uh, you know, you had also uh, uh, launched some kind of agitation. Uh, you had been offered ENPO was offered autonomy by the government, isn't it? So why are you not prepared to settle for more autonomy? Do you have the, how are you sustaining your movement for a separate state? That is also one of the questions that we are trying to seek answers yes. today. David Sangtam. Actually, state government has recommended autonomous council, but our UNP people, we have rejected because our demand is state and nothing else. That is a demand. Still, we continue in that trend then I have uh, heard some of my other colleagues speaking about the PJP party giving commitment. In fact, it was in the year 2013 when Mr. Nitin Katkari, the present union minister, was the PJP national president. He came to Tingshan, our ENP headquarters, and has assured in the public meeting that he'll take up our front and back statehood demand in the parliament also. And as for the fund, that's how we work about for the functioning of the organization when so, so you 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 now want comes, you want the bjp to honor its commitment now is it each you do you want the bjp household. to honor its commitment so that is how we collect and mobilize our fund you want david sangtam now you want are you saying that you want In the fact, bjp to honor its commitment it is a humble request that our bjp present common Surely we would request the PJP government to look into our genuine demand. In fact, histori historically we are from different background. When you look into Article 3 and 1A, the historical background of our people is well written. So I request all the other panelists also refer to Article 3 and 1A for clear information. Now, Shekhar Dutta, uh, Shekhar, if you can hear me, Okay, Shekhar, we have lost the line there. Uh, you, you know, Nonigopal uh, Mohanto, uh, I mean, like, see, uh, they're saying that BJP, and Susanta also made this very important point, the BJP had made this kind of a commitment, decentralization of power, and uh, Mr. David Sangtam, the leader of the ENPO, which is demanding for a separate state in Nagaland to be carved out, he's saying that Nitin Gakhtari had come to Tiwensang, which is the headquarters of the ENPO, and promised that, yes, they will consider their demand. So. Do you think the BJP has to sort of uh, come up with an answer? Honoring the commitment is a different issue. At least come up with an answer. 
but look at the uh, was we look at the character of you know Indian ruling elites forget about BJP of course BJP you know did it in 2000 and they have this commitment for smaller states for proper governance I do not believe that only division of states would lead to a better form of governance but even look at the in the historically if you look at when these states were carved out of Assam there was not even a decency to take the consent of Assam assembly at least to take their opinion so this is a kind of centralizing tendency of the Indian state to resolve this conflict at a red tech manner not in a very sustainable manner and you know but there is also if you look at the functioning of the local six schedule which is a constitutional part of uh, our Indian constitution mm -hmm. but look it is a kind of asymmetrical federalism I do not believe that the granting of state to this six schedule will give them actually not actual power if you look at the constitution of BTC no. which they legitimately Correct. deserve certain greater autonomy and greater power there is no doubt about no. that the issues is about immigration issues is about to, uh, development no, but they have asymmetrical representation in the present structure and if they go for a larger bigger state I am afraid that reservation that asymmetrical representation of particular community yeah. will be logically lost. Uh, I will take this question to both Shekhar Dutta and uh, Rupa Chandra. Uh, Shekhar Dutta first. Uh, Shekhar Dutta, do you, do, you think is, do you think now to get rid of this confusion, to put the record straight, uh, the BJP government in Tripura must make it stand clear on the floor of the house, whether they are, their ally has given up its demand what is the standard of BJP government? Put it on record on the floor of the house because during election campaign, a lot of people say a lot of things that has no value. But what do you think? As a senior political commentator observing the situation, do you think it is time for the BJP in Tripura to make it stand clear on the floor of the house? Uh, things uh, in Tripura have not uh, come to the stage where BJP is required to make it, make it stand clear on the floor of the house. Yes. But if uh, the question arises on the floor of the house, I am sure BJP make it stand clear. And BJP will unequivocally say that they are opposed to uh, division of the state and creation of a separate Tripuraland state. Yes. Uh, it is very clear from what uh, they have been talking about this issue for a very long time. Even the central BJP is firmly opposed to this and as you know, Tripura is a very small state. It is the second smallest state in Northeast if we, if we include Sikkim and the third smallest state in the country. Its geographical area is only 10,491.69 square kilometer. And the ADC for travels, ADC for travels based on six schedule encompasses 68.10% of the territory, state's territory already. But now no, the ADC okay. may be further empowered, it may be given more power, it may be given yes, a little wants. bit of so more autonomy, it, it may be directly point. funded. It, it is so, you know, uh, it's not just because but, there are certain movements but, uh, and uh, government no, comes up no with a state formation. No Look at every state, state formation since, here. I mean, 1955 onwards. Look at, the, uh, I would not like to go to the history. If you look at 2000, there was a politics behind. And again, the creation of Telangana state, there was a historical demand. But why at that point of time in 2014, Telangana state was created? Precisely to get electoral benefit. That's why Congress no, could not get. So no, what I'm trying to say is that there is a huge politics. Just because there is a movement, does just because there is an hesitation, Indian no. state doesn't allow state formation. There is a, you know, kind of good yes, exchange. Yeah. No, ironically, when the party was in power, uh, like say, the Congress created in Telangana, but uh, it cost uh, uh, heavily. But no, that post, post election factor, yeah, post -election, the anticipation yeah. was See, that it would give them dividends. Did, but, but that, yeah. that but did that's not happen. That's that why that Congress happen. rather the contrary no, happened. No, in fact, uh, Jairam Ramesh also later on he, he has written in his book that Congress should rather should have agreed to Mayawati's proposal of bifurcating U, UP into that uh, four states. And it's, see, I believe that BJP has not kept it alive on a, in its national manifesto. The states, uh, not in, no, the, not in me, respect I of will, North I will, states. I will, I will, also, it has also has the I impression will, of UP in mind. I will go to Rupa Chandra, but before that, uh, Shekhar Dutta, very quickly, uh, see, the IPFT contested nine seats. They won eight of them. But before that, uh, it was already clear that IPT, IPFT has withdrawn their demand for a separate state. So, even for the IPFT, the separate state demand is no longer an election winning uh, uh, agenda, isn't it? They have already tested success without a separate state demand. Uh, uh, 
আচ্ছা ওয়াজবে देयर इज अ स्पिन टू दिस बिफोर द इलेक्शन बीजेपी मेड इट वेरी वेरी क्लियर दैट दे वुड नेवर सपोर्ट सेपरेट स्टेट डिमांड एंड दे मेड अ जॉइंट डिक्लेरेशन विद आईपीएफटी यस आउटलाइनिंग द एजेंडा ऑफ द न्यू गवर्नमेंट वेयर इन दिस सेपरेट स्टेट थिंग वाज नेवर मेंशनड so ipft did not raise it as a major issue but in the hilly interior of the state they did campaign on the issue to oh, keep they their did followers campaign and on the issue together. secretly uh, and now they may make uh, yeah they may did campaign on the issue secretly to keep their followers together and satisfied and now they will make what they will do is they will make gentle noises occasionally to keep their cadres and uh, followers together but they may be serious about the issue only when they perceive a challenge from a regional political rival uh, like the INPT or uh, the tribal front organization of the CPI so otherwise they, they will this keep is quiet. the question Who i have to ask to bisojit doimari now bisojit doimari isn't it not as going to be at some point of time a survival issue for your political party suppose there are other other see apsu is not a political party suppose your political rival is to demand or intensify this campaign in collaboration with apsu and some other organizations then you'll be forced to also come up with this agitation for a separate state no 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 this is why not no, no, totally your survival not. will no. be at stake so we are looking that our uh, this kind of uh, movement should be an end in our assam our state that's why we are urging but that is an ideal situation no no but that I'll doesn't say, happen you, in you politics you see you see when government uh, commit uh, 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 give commitment to solve the problem but uh, they uh, don't give importance the money after uh, some month some day and that's why who are leading the money movement they try to disturb the money government uh, any time mm -hmm. and you see the separate state issue is only a reason but uh, uh the reason is that they have some demand who is that is not considered last 40 years 50 years and that's why they think that in the assam there is not possible to uh, where they are demanding some their communities issue yeah education uh, yeah culture and the other uh, some related money issues but government is not pay attention say in uh, assam bodo language is the associate official language yeah. but still not implemented in the state even bodo people cannot give the application in bodo language also no written in the sign board also so, so that is primary but what is the problem of assam government no 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 you to have to explain you have and to bagurumba you, you say to, you to, bodo says no, no, no. bagurumba you but are, the state government never have listen, send them as a assam representative you are, in you, any uh, function the, these are the issues i have taken so up. why are assam government they want to get separate but state. you have been already recognized the bagrumba listen you have whether they want to separate state God. or the, they uh, want to accept the say, as a second I language understood. of bodo language there is your no party thing. your party so I has think been this is nothing no 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 if, if it come to my hands hand, calm down i will sort this no, within no, 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 no. Calm, two years calm, all the assumptions calm, issue. calm down your party has been an ally of the congress your party has so, also been so an ally of the bjp we are not dancing movement we are just saying you have been an ally you have tested both sides of the spectrum you have been an ally of the congress BJP. That means the last 15 years you have been an alliance partner of the state government. You see, so what did you? Why did you not be able to do it? During the time of uh, 2014 election, we are not aligned with the BJP. That time BJP and APSU was man, uh, alliance. No, Ru Rupa Chandra. Rupa Chandra, the slightly different question to you. Uh, Rupa Chandra, you see, do you think uh, uh, what what is the role of the Manipur Assembly in this? Has it ever made clear? that Manipur will not be bifurcated at all. Uh, we, as you very rightly said, when the term Manipuri means the Metes, the Nagas and the Kukis, the three major groups. So what, I mean, so there is no question of Manipur uh, giving even an inch of its territory to be dismembered from the core. That's very clear, isn't it? Uh, Manipur Assembly is very clear on that issue. Yeah. Manipur, Manipur Assembly is very clear on that issue. It is not going to tolerate any loss of territorial integrity of Manipur. That has been made uh, amply clear by various resolutions that has been taken. But the, but the issue of statehood or that of the greater Nagalim once raised is going to remain a political issue. So long as, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, the politics of this caste, you know, and groups and tribalism stays, this is going to raise its head uh, again, even in this IP, uh, this Tripura case also, once once the uh, the politicians 
failed in delivering their goods, they will fall back on this. So the statehood boogie is a very dangerous boogie, and the center needs to deal it in a proper policy, with a proper policy. What is happening with the center in case of the ENPO, it has made a commitment to win the vote. Now it will be because once it's got the power, it's going to hold it back. But once it is out of power, then the same boogie will again raise. Similarly with the borderland also. Uh, as you have said, that it has enjoyed uh, alliance with both the BJP and the Congress. Now, when it is in the power, it will it will tend to go, uh, you know, slow on the issue. But once okay. out of power, to come back to power, that statehood boogie is going to raise. But as far as Manipur is concerned, uh, the, uh, there is a demand for uh, the cookie statehood, which has been raised recently, uh, which we see it as no. an attempt. Yes. Attempt to actually counter the Greater Nagalim movement, which has been this uh, being is a very point I'd like to IM. take to David Sankam, uh, so, but before that, so but this is Rupa, your point taken. Just hold on. Bimala uh, Koizam, statehood is a very dangerous bogey. That is what Rupa Chandra is saying. Extremely dangerous bogey that politicians or political groups use it to shoot their advantage, depending on the situation. Bimal. Okay, uh, okay, David Sangtam, I'll come back to Bimal on this. Uh, David Sangtam, there is seems to be a, uh, you know, how do we explain on one side, uh, the, the, the Naga rebel groups are demanding a greater Naga Lim, that, that may or may not happen, but that is their dream. On one side, uh, you are demanding a separation from Naga land. So, is there a total clash, isn't it, ENPO and the Naga insurgent groups? That is the pertinent question that even other NGOs or individuals they are asking. Actually, on the outset, I would uh, like to let the viewers also know that it was in the year 2010, 6 December, we have submitted our representation to the government of India. So in the year 2016, the government of India has accepted our bilateral talks. So we have had fourth round of bilateral talks so far. And now, Regarding our demand, we have informed to all the national workers also that we are not against the aspirations of any Naga political groups. Yeah. But what we appeal to them is, due to our economic, educational, and development backwardness, we request all of them to understand our problem, and they have understood our problem. But we have told them, all the leaders also openly, as and when Nagal political issue is uh, solved, that we also support, we want that ENPO jurisdiction, we would like to stay under one administrative block only, under one administration. So it does not affect in any way the solution that is being, I mean, awaited right. by the uh, Nagas. Just hold on, general. David. Uh, just hold on, David. Uh, Nanikupal Mohanto, how do you reconcile between these two? On one side, the Naga insurgent groups are dreaming. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, whether they have given it up or not, we yet don't know officially. Mm -hmm. Now, on the one side, they are still talking or thinking about this greater Nagalim. Uh, on the other side, there is an organization like the ENPO, ENPO. which wants to, say, wants to, you know, get out of Nagaland and have a separate state. So, uh, I mean, there is a clash well, of interest you see, there. You see, it is because of the very nature of the formation of India's northeast. You look at the heterogeneity of this region, 270 social groups, more than 180 plus languages. Even in Nagaland, it's such a heterogeneous, more than 20 tribal groups. So, uh, I mean, again, there is huge issue of tribalism. So, therefore, I do not believe that this kind of identical the political culture or pol political discourse, uh, identitist political discourse is going to solve the problem. Because Manipur, why should Manipur agree to the kind of, you know, uh, negotiation of their territory or why should Assam or that matter, why should Arunachal? So, I do not believe that this kind of what I would like to call surgical, you know, democracy 
It's a surgical democracy. We need to at some point of time need to negotiate with each other. We dialogue with each other. So it does because we are having some ailment in some part doesn't mean it will cut it. And that's why we need to develop a politics of accommodation. And what we want to I must tell you in Northeast, this politics of development, politics of governance must precede over politics of primordialism. All over what we see today is the you know ethnicization of space everywhere. But this ethnicization of space is not a homogeneous space. Look at Bodoland, look at Karbi Anglong. There are so many groups, 2001, 2002, 2003, till 2005. Again, there are a lot of classes within the group. Again, in NC Hills, you look at this kind of intra tribal or inter tribal oh, yes. feudal. So that is that why my point is that if one group asks, for dominance in the form of state, why not the other groups would not ask for? Therefore, at some point of time, we need to link each other in the form of a politics of the, overarching politics the of same development. Question to you, civic, civic the same, kind the of same question to you, Susanta no, Talukda. Un, until and unless the political patronization of these uh, politics ends, the, the, you are not going to find a solution. See, in uh, UP passed a resolution. Mayavati's government passed a resolution in the, on the floor of the assembly seeking bifurcation of UP into four states and in the next year he lost because this was uh, uh, opposed. So now the ball is in the court of the, the central government, presently yeah. the NDA government. Yeah. The, the government has to clarify whether it still abides, it, it, will, it, will, it is going to implement the or 2004 not. promises, electoral promises, or not, or it has rolled back its no, promises. No, that means and otherwise, this, uh, this that is going to another uh, question of Mr. Yes. Uh, you know, you know. Uh, I mean, I know it is going to be a difficult question for you to answer. My question to you is: Why should there be autonomy? In as Noni Gopal Mohanto said, uh, dominant group. Why should the other non-dominant groups also demand for a separate? Why should not? Now, the question is: Even in the case of autonomous councils, why should it be named as you know? Bodoland Autonomous Council or N Dima Hasa or Karbi Autonomous Council or Garo Autonomous Council because there are a lot of other people uh, in in that area. Now within the BTC, there are the coast Rajmangsis, they are also demanding, they are also uh, there is an agitation. Really. So there is an argument yeah. that it should be regional councils, Eastern so, Assam Regional Council, Western Assam Regional, so that everybody feels a sense of belonging. Uh, how do you like to respond, Bisojit Doimani? Yeah, you, you see, in our uh, Assam's problem is that uh, we are not a single community or single culture, single linguistic group <coughs> here. That is our uh, problem. But uh, you see, the uh, Bodleian uh, demand was come when uh, Bodos have some demands here, the Indian name of uh, school. So when uh, school was established there, time to time, they don't uh, money upgrade into ME school, yeah. high school. And yeah. even now, after class 10, Bodo medium students no, have my, to... My uh, 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 Bodo, Come to the point. Bodo medium students have to uh, study uh, in English medium yeah. after matriculation. That's why Bodo people's only 4% students are man, uh, uh, now, they are survived. When others are all money uh, left out after the uh, money higher secondary. That's are the problem. No, that, that's no, why the no, demands. My and question then, is, and, and, for the sake of and, argument. And then the, yeah. No, no. What I am saying, that's are the Assam uh, separate uh, th this uh, money issue. Why they are demanding? These are no, these, these were not a big issues. So what I am saying, whether you accept or not, Bodo's issue was only this kind of small, small, small issue. Because Lastly, of that, they it lost, developed into they a big lost, issue. They lost the confidence no. under the yeah. government. No. Then they, are, they will never... No, no, no. no, no. Hmm. If, if Delhi is online, I don't know whether Bimal Ako is... Um, uh, okay, uh, I'll have to go for a break. But before that, uh, uh, Rupa Chandra, f how, are you looking from a, how are you looking from a distance, uh, this issue of autonomy, autonomy in the name of an ethnic group? Uh, uh, Wasbir, I think our uh, our politicians. Wasbir. Yeah, very quickly. Yeah, uh, I feel our politicians have perfected the art of divide and rule. You know, you divide people on various you know grounds and then try to win their votes depending on that group's uh, affiliation yeah. and group's desire. And uh, and the moment they come into power. They will want to uh, uh, remain quiet on all the promises they have made it. But once they are out of the power, they will raise that boogie so once again. That is politics of sustenance. So this that is, is the politics of sustenance. Uh, Rupa Chandra, hold your thoughts. I will come back to you right after this very, very short break. See you.
welcome back devit sangcham now you have got the bjp which is in a dominant position in the government in nagaland and you have still you are still pinning your hopes on the central government now it is the two parties are having the same government at the center and a dominant uh, position of the bjp in the state so do you think that uh, the government is now going to take your demand seriously or what is going to be the solution uh, to your demand in the days ahead uh david sangtam can you hear me okay david sangtam i don't think is uh, is hearing at this point in time uh now i want to ask again take this question to bisojit doimari i was asking you this question you know when you have the same uh, you are an alliance partner uh, in the state so the bjp is ruling the state in collaboration with your party and the agp now my question is what are you planning to do in the days ahead how are you going to break this log jam because the apsu it appears because they have already formed a new organization uh, they have formed a new organization yes, uh, called you know uh, the small national uh, federation, federation for, for small yes. states uh, so they are going to only intensify their demand new states, new states. yeah so how are you going to tackle this situation now Uh, see, my view is that uh, now this uh, separate state the issue of uh, Bodoland is this is uh, different with the other separate state issue, because already government of India, mean India has uh, formed one committee headed by JK Pillai. Uh, no doubt, uh, still this is uh, not working. Yeah. But yet it is in one step, and here clearly mentioned that it will be um, uh, examined the uh, Bodo issue. whether there is needed of separate state or whether separate state is feasibility or not and they will concern with the uh, other civil societies also so uh, i think through this uh, the, there will be uh, some mane uh, 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 po point of solution come out uh, mane through this uh, uh, committee and uh, government also so we are always discussing with the ministers also then the other officials also say uh, always uh, talk about the uh, problems not the separate state issue first you talk why you want separate state then they will definitely tell the, what are the problem what are they are uh, uh, facing with the present state government yeah, then right. definitely yeah. without the separate state also the present oh, state government no. can mane solve no, their no. problem yes. noniko palmo i mean like feasibility yeah. nobody talks things about this issue of feasibility you no. just uh, set up a committee uh, council there are so many development councils in assam i have lost count there are so many autonomous council which are uh, which except the btc uh, none of the other autonomous councils uh, are financially no, no viable yes. yeah. uh, look at dima hasao look at the north kacha hills autonomous council it's the first autonomous council set up in the whole of the northeast north kacha hills was autonomous council came up in 1952 yeah. just yeah. five years after independence today the the government employees in north kacha hills are not getting salary this is a regular issue there is no mechanism i mean also. there is no mechanism look at karbi anglong there is the same problem and there is lot of alleged yeah. corruption well, i mean e when in a, in a, in a, in a autonomous council where there is no money for the government i mean no money for the council employees you find you are hearing about corruption charges to yeah. you know 1000 crore what's going on nani yeah, palmo was very you know in fact uh, i remember uh, reading and attending your <coughs> seminar also you yourself uh, <coughs> have conducted lot of seminars on that and you yeah. have written on that now the question here is that you know just to putting the owners on delhi would not bring us anywhere You know, all the time, if you look at the logic and the debate of our elites, it's only you know the Delhi is the my bab. So we have to ask ourselves, you know, at this age of globalization. In fact, this is the age of post globalization. <coughs> at this point of time, what is the nature of our human resource? Yeah, even if you look at the land holding, we talk about tribal autonomy. We talk about tribalism. Have you looked at the land holding pattern? who owns the land in this tribal areas even these people have not got legitimate ownership of land these are certain critical issues issues of corruption issues of accountability and transparency issues of cag have we audited the amount that we have spent on various developmental issues in many cases this cag audit has not been done so these are certain issues we try to forget blissfully yeah. remain oblivious of this issue and we go for easier option what is the easier option the state who demand and look at the kind of demands the issues 
there could be certain legitimate demand. For example, in Eastern Nagaland, I do not want to look into the veracity of the demand, but there could be legitimate. But the point I'm trying to say is that what let my me, friend Bissonjit has talked about, you know, Bagarumba, question of language, these issues could be resolved at the display right. level. So Our no, bureaucracy no, need to be more sensitive. And I would also okay. ask, who, ask Wasby, since you have done also written on these issues, what is your take on that? Because you have talked about regional issues, you have done a survey on that. What is people's perception? Because we are talking about elite perception. What is people's perception? No, because it's also important to know your yeah, viewpoint. Yeah, my, my viewpoint it was in the form of a question we asked uh, to Visadid Doimari. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, several surveys have been conducted, several analysis have been done on this issue because in the, in the quest to satisfy, as you yourself said, uh, the uh, separate. You said that the separate state is the uh, uh, is the outcome of the government's policy to uh, appeasement, policy of actually uh, winning an election, or you know that kind of a thing. So this survey and analysis of the issue appears that it is an attempt at uh, assuaging the sentiments of the dominant community. It's a, just a ad hoc kind of a hodgepodge arrangement, and again you generate the scope for other communities in that same area to agitate. So the cycle goes on. So therefore, there was this question as to whether uh, no autonomy in the subsequent days or in the future should be given in the name of the dominant community, yeah. whether it should be just a neutral, yeah. community neutral or ethnic group neutral kind of a name given uh, to that regional autonomy and things like that. But I, I, I cannot afford to only give my comments. I have to take this question uh, to, to David Sangtam. Uh, David, you know, Rupa Chandra in Imphal says that the Manipur Assembly has given a, a absolutely clear-cut resolution that not an inch uh, of territory will be given. There will be no dismemberment of the state. Now, what is the stand of the Nagaland government? Because the Nagaland Assembly will also come up with similar kind of a resolution that, okay, we will not allow Nagaland to be dismembered into two states. But I also know the fact that you're, you are representing an area that has 20 MLAs. So it's a very interesting situation. David. Yes, it actually, we have 20 elected members. Yeah. But you know, when the state was inaugurated in 1963, we did not have any representatives in the assembly because we were under regional council. That is with the 35% member regional council. So till 1973, we were separate. So our way of working was through regional council and as per Article 371A, system of working was quite different in the case of ENP area than Timson area. That means any act of parliament cannot be applied in Nagaland <coughs> state without Nagaland legislature's approval. Like that, any act of the state cannot be applied in ENP jurisdiction, that is elsewhere Timson area, without approval of the regional council of Timson. That was also working system was also quite different. No. Now, as far no. as the state demand, uh, in uh, neighboring states are concerned, uh, we don't know much of the historical background. But for the ENP people, our history, our history is quite different. It is very genuine. Right. Uh, let me ask you a straight question no history, without going into history, David. Or uh, David, just hold on. Uh, David, uh, my question to you is, you know, I was trying to ask you this question right. before. Now, the BJP is in a dominant power in Nagaland. Uh, you said that uh, you know BJP had given you the assurance Nitin Gadkari had come to your headquarters in Tiwensang. Now, are you going to have a talk with the Nafi Rio government? Are you going to have uh, talks with the government and the BJP leaders in Nagaland to discuss seriously your issue? No doubt, now the new government has come in where we also have uh, sent uh, four of our BJP elected members from our EMB area who are yeah. part of the present ministry. We will appeal to all the elected members, the elected members, the elected members, party, the elected party, and we have, no party, party. We have no party affiliation. We are good and close with all the political parties. We have no pick and choice as far as political parties are concerned. So we have to work with the present day government in the past two the government of the state has extended cooperation. So we are very confident that the present government also will extend cooperation to our demand. And uh, to my understanding, we don't 
have the agitation type of demanding our rightful, I mean, demand also. Like other organizations, we don't go to the street, we don't create problem to any civil organization, state, government, or anybody. Actually, our demand is true non-violence, true democratic process. We don't hurt anybody in the process of our demand, be it individual organization or even the government also. In fact, we are very grateful to the government of India that we have reached up to the stage of right. court bilateral talks, <coughs> which Sando. has finished uh, just uh, last week on the 19th of this okay. March only. So we are very hopeful that the present government, yeah, yeah. in whatever way, they yeah. can extend the cooperation to the government. Well, well, I'm yeah. very well, confident. He is basically that saying that he has pinned his hopes on the government. Exactly. See, uh, we have to understand that creation of states can be decided only by the central government. States has no role no. in it except that passing a resolution in the assembly. So the call has to be taken by the, the, the central, central, central government. government. Because, and all, we also have to keep in mind, see the creation of the states is a, it's a uh, new state, is a constitutional demand. There is a provision for creation of new states in the provision constitution itself. So, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the demand on the streets, movement on the streets, these are political reality. We cannot wish away a political problem. It has to be tackled politically. You have to open up the discussion dialogue. So until, yeah. until and unless you open so, up dialogue and discuss, and absolutely. you cannot yeah. just uh, Rupa simply Chandra, wish away a Rupa Chandra, these are political issues. When the ceasefire in Nagaland was extended to Manipur, we saw what happened. There was chaos in, uh, uh, in Imphal. The, uh, I mean, it was a total chaos in Imphal, 18 people died. Now, my question to you, suppose for the sake of resolu resolving the Naga issue, uh, do you think, you know, that is also an issue because the issue of a separate state or a greater Naga limb, all these states, and that will, if you don't give, uh, I, I, I believe that uh, Nagas in Manipur are not going to be part of that deal, that is my belief, but I suppose the Nagas in Manipur have to be given some, some different sort of an arrangement to assuage their feelings. Uh, that is also possible. <coughs> Actually, uh, see, uh, before I come to that, uh, you know, there's this framework agreement which everyone is looking at with hawk eyes. Uh, the Assamis are concerned, the Arunachalis are concerned, we are concerned. Nobody wants to part their territory. Everyone agrees to a settlement where it's honorable for everyone. So the BJP is actually walking a very tight rope. Now, think of, you know, Nitin Gadkari has given ENPO uh, 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 a commitment of a separate state. Where does that figure in the framework agreement? So that is going to be a, a very dicey, you know, uh, uh, area for the BJP to trade through. Now, as far when it comes to Manipur, the Manipur BJP unit will be singing another song. In Nagaland, the Nagaland BJP will be singing another song. So this double speak has actually put all people on tenter hook. Right. Now, as far as Manipur is concerned, <coughs> uh, the, the Manipuri politicians basically will say that we are in for an honorable solution. But at the same breath, they will say that we will not part with a single inch of our land. Now, where does that bring one to? So this politicization of this you know, okay, this politicization, we have to bear with it. Uh, we, Bimal Akhoizam is back with us. We have got the line back with Bimal Akhoizam. Uh, Bimal, we have missed uh, you in a uh, large section of the debate because of technical faults, because of the audio issue. Now, my question is, Bimal, we have been discussing how justified it is to grant autonomy in the name of an ethnic group. For example, we have the uh, Biswajit Doimari is sitting here. I know he has an opinion, but just for the sake of argument only, we have the Borderland Territorial Council. We have the Karbi Autonomous Council. It's all, we have the Khasi Hills Autonomous Council. It's all in the name of a community. Uh, so do you think this kind of a precedence encourages other people to continue with this demand and becomes a never ending kind of an agitation? See, Two things. Most of this demand for state comes from, as I have said it, you know, it, it could be related to identity issue that our cultures needs to be protected, our language needs to be protected, and religion and issues of that kind. You know, broadly can 
consider as a issue of identity. Right. And there is a second set of issue, which is of what we call it issues of redistribution. You know, developmental issues, your job, your uh, you know well-being, uh, you know the, uh, your access to resources and facilities, and so on. Now, in in Northeast, what I'm saying is that every issue of redistribution is packaged to an identity politics, except perhaps this demand for uh, Eastern Frontier, it is primarily on the basis of redistribution questions. We, we don't get access to jobs, we don't get access to educations <coughs> like the so-called advanced tribe and so on. So this is a developmental issues. In other issues, there is always couch in the language of identity, and this has a history in that part of the world. They have used, the Indian state has used this identity uh, and, and granting of state as, as if it's like a cookies in the jar and the cookies huh. is all in the Delhi and you want cookies to be supplied to you. And that what I am saying is that, you know, it is a dangerous, we call it balkanization of Assam, for example. Uh, when the state re reorganization was done in the 50s, it was done on the linguistic basis, but in notice it was based on ethnicity, so to speak. But again, if this ethnicity is not simply ethnicity, it is a part of a larger counterinsurgency measure. Much of the development projects, the manner in which identity aspirations have been addressed is part of the Indian states trying to consolidate itself through its counterinsurgency measure. So the Northeast question is a little different from those of the Telangana or, you know, Vidarbha yeah, yeah. or, you know, bifurcation of UP into four states. Right. Don't get mixed up. So this is one part. My, my, my assessment is that any form of redistribution, we should be able Some to very talk very and have point, a, ways of negotiating uh, with Sikh Schedule. What Sikh Schedule has done to Meghalaya? Tell no, me. Paul, you tell me very honestly. We have a counterinsurgency measure. Don't you think that applies to the case of the BLT? Yeah, Was it know, also it, part of the counterinsurgency measure? Uh, I have argued. Uh, Mr. I'll take your views also. You, you know, I have argued uh, before that, you know, when there is creation of, except perhaps, Maghalaya, Nagaland, Mijuram. Let's Mijur, talk about Manchal. the BLT case. Yeah. Now, the, the, this is right, that the counterinsurgency becomes as not an, you know, the resolution of the conflict is not an end in itself. You do it as a counterinsurgency step. That is the most dangerous part. But having said, having said, my point is this, that you cannot put the onus only on the Indian state because you have sufficient autonomy. You have sufficient autonomous space within your jurisdiction. Look at the kind of, you know, uh, autonomy this kind of six schedule uh, organization yeah. or the council enjoy. You own, and this is the best example of asymmetrical federalism. So my point is that, yes, Indian state orchestrates many of this autonomous demand. You know, even won't be surprised. Tomorrow, you will find a different kind of autonomous I'm, demand in some other tribal areas. I'm, so I'm Indian running, state, I'm even the, for even, the, even, even the intelligence group. Mr. Jitramani, your reaction, because Bimola Koizam has made a very interesting point there. He said, some of these things are also part of the government's counter-insurgency measure. Because when they talk to, uh, you see, the background of the present BTC, they were at that time, the government was talking to a militant group at that time. It start, talk started with the BLT. So there is you, a base you, you conflict and group. mechanism. Our, our, uh, our Bodolite case is a little different because uh, BLT is not like a other extremist organization. So uh, they are... Uh, no, but BLT they was indulging in a lot of violence, but only difference was that you were not demanding a... Sovereignty. Sovereignty. Sovereignty, Sovereignty also. But you were demanding a separate state. Always, uh, state here but and, violence uh, was there. And you see it. So their vision was very good and they are very practical. And that's why they talk with the government within a short time, within six years. Man, they completed their issue. But the, this Bodo Accord was man, done in the uh, leadership of Hagrama Mohilari. But I don't know others I have why they are already talking last 20 years, 10 years, 12 years, but the leader could not um, so, take any decision. Uh, let me so, quickly. So that's why what right. I'm saying this is uh, different. And we have to thank Hagrama Mohilari. He is the one uh, man, extremist leader who already man, come in the mainstream, signed the accord, and he uh, facilitated to uh, man, public also. He bring this uh, territory, he bring the CIT, he established the university, he established engineering college. If other extremists also do like that, give it it's money, well and good. We, we give, give up their... It is well, it is, it is well, it is well and good. Now, Rupa Chandra, Rupa Chandra, Bimal Akhoizam made a very, very interesting point there that some of these things are counter-insurgency measures as well, which is very rightly said. My question to you, Rupa Chandra, is this. What about SWAT? Suppose the government of India as part of the counterinsurgency measure decides to give some kind of a maximum autonomy or an autonomous state to the Nagas in Manipur. 
then what happens? Uh, I, I, I quite agree with Bimol when he says that uh, this whole uh, statehood issue, all this is a part of counterinsurgency measure by the center. But having said that, uh, you know, uh, in Manipur, uh, what is happening is, uh, you know, this NSN IM has been, uh, you know, patronized as mother of all insurgents. So that was the first step in trying to consolidate, uh, you know, uh, this uh, Naga groups into one so that a negotiation can be brought into. Right. But everyone is following the kind of talk that is taking place between the NSNIM and the government of India. As has been rightly pointed out by one speaker, for 20 years, what is happening? Nothing conclusive is happening. So the whole idea is uh, concluding the NSNIM talk yeah. is a very dangerous thing for the government of India. Correct. Because it cannot please all the parties. You cannot bifurcate Manipur to please the NSNIM. Neither can it please the NSNIM by uh, taking away the Manipur's part and only giving the Nagaland. Correct. So what, it, what is happening is that as a part of counter-insurgency, they are taking forward the talk, making these insurgent groups tire, you know, uh, ma make them Unable Absolutely. to go back to their jungle lives. Correct. Uh, and correct. It's a whole, I am running short of know, time, Rupa Chandra. Uh, uh, I am whole. Uh, hold your thoughts, uh, Rupa Chandra. I am running short of time. Bimal Akhoyam, uh, we are running short of time. Your last words on the subject. See, I think uh, I, as long as the development and redistribution question is concerned, we should have a genuine effort to understand each government in Assam can do a survey like this, uh, you know, the such a uh, committee. You can have a model of that kind in Nagaland. You can have a model of that kind in Manipur and find out if any communities have been marginalized and it should be genuinely tried to address. Do not stroke identity politics. Northeast is already fragmented. You are the target of the neoliberal economy. Yeah. You will be swift out of existence if you do not aware and you distract your energy instead of concentrating on resolving and taking a stand on your future together. You are fighting on this fragmentation identity politics. Genuinely redistribution question must be addressed. If any cultural threat to any community within Correct. any of these states must also be addressed, to be addressed. but last without words, having this common last goal words, in mind, David Sangtam, David Sangtam, your last words, very very quickly, ten seconds. Finally, finally, I would like to thank the government of India for having given ENP the privilege to have bilateral talks up to fourth round now. So okay. in fact, our organization is the only one who have had bilateral talks up to date. So I extend on behalf of my people, even right. to the remotest corner of Nagaland State, we, we, Myanmar, we, we hope that we express our gratitude. We to will watch, we'll keep a close watch on the progress of the talks with Sandra Kalodar. We are heading for another Lok Sabha election. So BJP will be under pressure to clarify on its pro poll promises made in 2014. BJP, because that is going to keep BJP the... BJP will yeah. be under pressure because that to is going to keep the, for promises, keep the hopes alive. Yeah. Last words, so 10 I, seconds. I, I, my request is uh, that the, uh, our uh, border groups, APSU and other allied organizations, should not uh, launch movement again because uh, this borderland issue is known by all. So there is need a solution and already government uh, have formed a... Uh, committee to examine this issue and other issues, we can talk with the same minister and the central government R and definitely, resolve, resolve definitely we can resolve uh, together and uh, uh, they take confidence on us also, you are appealing also, we will take the right. You are appealing to the APSU yeah. and other organizations not to agitate and rather resolve the issue bilaterally through dialogue. Uh, Nanikupal Mohanta, your last word. Was be, you know, uh, decentralization by itself is not the panacea. We need to critique decentralization. Just remember, these forms of decentralization are also forms of centralization. Absolutely. Look at even Panchayati Raj. Is there yeah. Panchayati Raj? So yes. politics of representation required from the bottom to the top. I think although there is some mechanism, but this has not been implemented. So and rather point, implement the politics of decentralization. And politics of recognition. Politics That's why of perhaps we need a kind need of Sami Council sort of institution. Uh, need whereby need we to can recognize, them. need the politics of recognition and the politics of decentralization. Uh, uh, Rupa Chandra, 10 seconds to you last words yeah 
Yeah, I, I look, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Rupa Chandra, your last words. I, I think we should look at the Singa Singapore model, Singapore model where you have three distinct, distinct uh, ethnic groups. Yeah. You know, sharing a land as small as some 8,000 square kilometers. The Malays, the Indians, and, they have, you know, and of uh, course the Chinese. They have not perfected as yet, but the, the ethnic politics has been taken over by the politics of development. Politicians speaks on development. Need for the politics of development. Yes, there's a so, very, very uh, interesting views coming, uh, coming in there. The politics of decentralization, the politics of recognition, and the politics of development should be the need of the hour. Uh, that is only perhaps the panacea to that can resolve the issue or the dream or the demand for separate states. On this note, I'd like to thank all my panelists. And this brings me to the end of this edition of Notice tonight. Good night and good.